Hey guys, this is Zach with Next Tech News, and today we're going to do a unique video of a build for my mom. She needed a new computer, so what I ended up doing was building a all-in-one PC for her. Um, basically, it's a do-it-yourself way of doing it. I built a small computer that mounts to the back of a monitor, and that way she doesn't have a lot of stuff on her desk, a big you know, PC tower or anything like that on her desk. All it's going to be is the monitor and her keyboard and mouse. So let's get started. So the parts I chose for this build were the Z170 Pro Gaming by ASUS. It's an um, you know mini ITX board um, with quite a few USB 3.0 ports, um, also a couple 3.1s. Um, it has two USB 2s and pretty much has every port that I really needed for my mom's build. Um, it actually has way more than she's ever had before, so that will be good. I chose the 500 gigabyte Evo SSD by Samsung. I chose some Vengeance 16 gigabyte kit. It's running at 2666 two uh, megahertz. And then I also chose the i5 6600K. Um, primary reason I went with this processor over like an i7 or something like that um, has actually nothing to do with um, performance of the processor or anything like that. She, for one, she doesn't need an i7. Um, she just doesn't do enough extensive work on the PC to need an i7. Um, and for two, this processor is a lot more power efficient than the i7 is and she really needed to stay under a specific target wattage wise for load wattage um, because the power supply is kind of a unique power supply that I ordered. Um, you'll see part of it when I start building is a um, like a little logic board that plugs into the 20 pin and then the 4 pin for the CPU and everything and then part of it is like a laptop um, charger so it's 144 watts and that's what I had to stay under for this build. So I also went with the Cryorade C7, which I think is going to be really cool for this build. It's a nice low profile fan, um, which should cool it down pretty good. And then the most unique part of this build, I would say, is the Antec 25 case. It's a really small mini ITX case that has a vase mount so that it can mount to the back of a monitor. And then I chose this monitor, honestly, for one primary reason, which was that it had really good mounting points on the back um, for this. So I think this will work really well with the monitor. And honestly, she doesn't need anything more than 1080p. She doesn't need anything high response rate or anything like that. All she primarily does is working applications like Excel and QuickBooks because she's a CPA. So she doesn't really need anything with a high refresh rate or anything like that. She's not a gamer. So this PC should be perfect for her.
Okay, so one unique thing I wanted to mention, um, I'm still putting together the C7 here, but they give you a tool, a cryo rig tool, that does not work with the nut that they give you. Um, I don't know if this is an uncommon thing, just an accident or whatever. Um, luckily I have other tools, but I just wanted to let you guys know if this happens to you when you buy the C7, um, just to make sure you get the correct tool because they give me what's saying is a seven millimeter, but this is actually, let me grab my tools. So like I said, this tool thinks it's a seven millimeter, um, but it's not. This is an actual seven millimeter and that's what actually fits this nut. The socket they give you is a seven millimeter socket, but the nuts they give you are eight millimeter ones. So you need an eight millimeter socket to screw that in to connect the C7 to the motherboard. Okay, we're good. So luckily I have my own tool set, so I can still build this, but make sure um, that you have a seven millimeter wrench um, just in case that this doesn't work because the one they sent me was wrong. Hey guys, while I'm wiring up here, let me give you a quick tip. In this case up here, there are four USB 2.0 ports on the front of the case, but you do need two USB 2.0 headers to power all four of those ports. I sadly did not think that through, and my motherboard only has one USB 2.0 header and one USB 3.0 header. So I could only use two of the ports on the front rather than all four. So if you're choosing a motherboard and you want all four of those ports to work, make sure you think it through that it has two USB 2.0 headers because a 3.0 header is not backwards compatible with a 2.0 header.
So now I'm gonna download all the drivers I need and then I wanna make sure and do a stress test on the CPU to make sure that the power supply that's in there um, actually can handle that CPU. Um, if I have to, the reason I chose the i5-6600K was so that I could underclock it if I need to to meet the power requirements. Um, what ended up happening in the build is you could see that I had a power supply. Let me grab it. So I had a Pico power supply here, um, but this one only comes with a four pin CPU connector. And obviously that's not gonna work when you have an eight pin CPU power connector on the motherboard. And so I was able to use the one that comes with the actual case, which I didn't really realize it had that, but that worked out. Um, but I'm not sure how much watts that one is. So I'm gonna try to run a CPU stress test on this once I've installed all the drivers I need and we'll see if it can run everything. So as you guys can see, I just ran the stress test, um, scored a 593 CB, which is pretty normal for an i5-6600K. If you remember from um, my i7 versus i5 video, it scored also around there. Obviously this isn't overclocked at all, it's at the stock clock speed, um, which is where I'm probably going to leave this one because I don't think I have very much room for the wattage. Hey, get out of here. I don't think I have very much room for the wattage, but um, I just ran the stress test. It looks good. I'm going to run it a couple more times just to make sure, um, but I think we're good. So if you are thinking about building in this case, there's a couple things to think about. First off, this case is not really made for gamers or anything like that. Um, I don't see any way of fitting a GPU in here. Obviously, I have the PCI slot in there but literally there's no room for a GPU. There's barely enough room for the components that are in here. Um, it's literally, like literally the C7 is just about against this grill. Um, and even the RAM modules, even though I will admit these are pretty tall RAM modules, are about touching this. Um, I honestly don't think I could fit any more components into this PC. Um, one other thing to think about is that the SSD is not in this part of the drive or this part of the case It's actually in the back side, which took me a second to figure out um, And then the last thing I would like to mention is like I said earlier the C7 for some weird reason This one that I got had a tool um, that didn't actually work. It was a seven millimeter tool and it's actually an eight millimeter nut that is used to tighten it down. So luckily I did have tools, but just keep that in mind. I really think that her PC turned out really well. Um, what do you guys think? I'd li really like to know what you guys think of this PC because I thought this was really unique. Um, let me know what you think in the comments and everything. And uh, I really hope you like this video. This is Zach with Next Tech News. See ya.